This year's Nobel Peace Prize is being shared by three champions of human rights. The jailed Belarusian rights activist Ales Bialyatsky, Russia's memorial organization and Ukraine's Center for Civil Liberties. The joint award highlights the significance of civil society for peace and democracy. The most highly anticipated announcement in a week of awards. At the stroke of 11 in Oslo, the chair of Norway's Nobel Committee ended the speculation. This year's Peace Prize is awarded to human rights advocate Arles Bialyatsky from Belarus. The Russian Human Rights Organization Memorial and the Ukrainian Human Rights Organization Center for Civil Liberties. The committee said it was recognizing three champions of human values in a region rife with repression and fear. They have made an outstanding effort to document war crimes, human rights abuses and the abuse of power. Together, they demonstrate the significance of civil society for peace and democracy. Alez Bialyatsky has been a leader of the democracy movement in Belarus since the mid-1980s. He was detained following anti-government protests in 2020 and remains in jail without trial. The committee called for the 60-year-old's immediate release. Ukraine's Centre for Civil Liberties has been active for more than a decade. Following Russia's invasion of Ukraine, the group has worked tirelessly to document war crimes against civilians. The memorial NGO has its roots in the Soviet Union. In Russia, it continued to track human rights abuses and the fate of political prisoners, but it was dissolved late last year as part of the Kremlin's ever-tightening crackdown on dissent. The Nobel Committee says the prize was not a direct message to the Russian president. For most, though, it's another stinging rebuke for the repressive regime of Vladimir Putin, which also happens to fall on his 70th birthday. Now, DW uh, correspondent Nick Connolly joins us now from Kiev and on the line from Bonn is DW Russia analyst Roman Goncharenko. Nick, let's start with you. Uh, the only individual who was awarded is the human rights advocate Alas Bialyatsky, who is in a Belarusian prison, uh, prison uh, right now. Could you tell us more about him? I think his biography really stands for the history of modern Belarus. This is someone who started off as a dissident in his student years in the 1980s, while the Soviet Union still existed, who has been in, out of, in and out of prison routinely since Belarus gained independence uh, in the early 90s, and uh, you know, whose organization, Visna, is crucial to helping families, helping loved ones find out where their, uh, their, their closest uh, relatives and friends are, often, you know, arrests in Belarus happen without much warning, without any proper procedure uh, and there's obviously been a lot of harassment of journalists but also of anyone standing up for their civil rights down the decades um, and that's obviously something brought into a real sharp focus in 2020 when you had those mass protests in Belarus, hundreds of thousands of people, people going out to protest and lots of people just disappearing for days on end so an organisation like his, Visna, really crucial there, he's been in jail since 2021 uh, and uh, this is obviously a very clear signal from the prize committee that Belarus is not forgotten for all the stuff going on in Russia and in Ukraine, this is still very much on the agenda. Uh, Roman, let's talk about the uh, Russian organization Memorial and why do they deserve this prize? Well, it is no surprise they get the prize now because they were nominated many times. Uh, it is the most, the most famous, the most renowned Russian human rights organization, uh, founded in the 80s, um, uh, a child of perestroika, if you wish, at uh, the time when Russia was, Soviet Union at the time was open, uh, open for democracy. And um, at the core of its activity was uh, studying the dark times of the Soviet Union in the 30s, the great terror by uh, the Soviet dictator Stalin. 
And uh, in that respect, it is also a signal to the current uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin, who adores Stalin and, and trying to implement some of Stalin methods uh, in current Russia and also in this war in Ukraine, against Ukraine. Uh, that is why it is a very symbolic decision by the Nobel Prize Committee to show uh, that it is important to remember the um, crimes of the past. It is important to prevent them in the future and now in these days. Uh, Nick, back to you. Uh, can you tell us more about the uh, third recipient, the uh, Ukrainian human rights organization Center for Civil Liberties, please? Well, I think it wouldn't, uh, you know, it, they wouldn't be offended if I said that this is certainly an organization that is a lot less prominent in Ukraine than both uh, Alice Beletsky and his Visna organization and Memorial are in their respective countries. Yes, this is an organization that, that has been operating for years now, has been looking to kind of check, keep a check on what the government and the government's judicial uh, organs are doing. Most recently, since the most recent phase of this Russian aggression against Ukraine, it's been documenting war crimes against civilians in Russian-occupied Ukraine, something that obviously has to be done quickly and following all the standards if those uh, bits of evidence are going to be used in potential war crimes prosecutions. But certainly Ukraine is not a country that has the same issues with freedom of speech and with uh, judicial kind of abuses as Belarus and Russia do. And I think this is really about the optics that at a time where Russia is attacking Ukraine, where Belarus is being used by Russia to attack Ukraine, that the Nobel Prize Committee wants to include a Ukrainian organization in that uh, three uh, kind of group, that, that kind of triple group of winners. Uh, Rowan, in the light uh, of what Nick just said there, does this mean that the uh, Nobel Committee uh, is kind of taking aim, in a way, at Vladimir Putin on his birthday? Well, I think it's a, it's a side effect. It's not the number one aim of the Nobel Prize Committee to, to give a sign uh, to Vladimir Putin on his birthday. But it is important that all three countries are represented. As just Nick said, Russia is waging war against Ukraine using Belarus uh, territory. And um, it was important also to, to um, take a Ukrainian, to, to um, give this award also to a Ukrainian organization, a human rights organization. I think what at the core of this is, um, it is it is a it is a message uh, to Vladimir Putin that this war will uh, be over someday, and uh, the crimes that are committed now will be investigated by these organizations and uh, others, of course. But these uh, stand out, and this is this is the, their time will come. I think this is one of the messages of this uh, of this day. The time will come when the crimes will be investigated, and it is very important to have independent organizations like uh, Vyasna in Belarus, like Memorial. Um, in Russia or like that Center for Civil Liberties in Ukraine. They are working now as we speak to collect very important data, which will be later studied at the court. DW's Russia analyst Roman Gonsharenko there and our correspondent Nick Connolly reporting from Kyiv. Thank you both very much.